Howdy partners, pow, pow. welcome back to my channel, and if you don't know, we gonna be giving away this tier free copy of Red Dead Redemption 2. You gotta check the comments down below to see all the rules of the sweepstakes giveaway contest, but the first thing that gotta happen before we give this game away is that we gotta reach 500 subscribers. So if you didn't like, comment, and subscribe to the video, just be sure to do that, and we are gonna give this away to one lucky prize contestant. Participant winner. So you, you got a pretty good chance of doing it. We got a small channel here. So you got a real good chance of winning this. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, okay? So today, we talking about this here John Wayne movie called The Searchers. This is a John Wayne movie from John Ford is the director. And what year was this? This was 1950 something or other. Hold up. It says here, 56. 19. 56. It's hard because this is a three-pack movie. I had to look through all the different dates for The Wild Bunch and how the West was won. Th this movie, this the movie I was looking for, but they're all listed on the back of the box, so it's kind of confusing. You got all the little print, little dates and numbers and copyrights and whatnot. Anyway, you don't want to hear about the DVD packaging fine print. Y'all want to hear about the John Wayne The Searcher movie. Ka -ka -chow -chow cowboy. So this chair movie, this from 1956, 7? What did I just say? Whatever. It don't matter. Y'all heard it's from the 50s, but it's in color because it's a Vista Vision Technicolor movie. And it's a beautiful John Ford directed movie. It's in all the beautiful colors of the rainbow in this movie. And you got John Wayne. And let me tell you, this movie is horrifying, okay? In a way that movies are no longer horrifying. Nowadays, everything is just all like, it's all just laid out in the open. All the blood, all the guts, all the gore, all the gruesome rapes and whatnot. They just put it right up in the movie. You know, you go to see your G-rated Disney movie. They show in full penetration and whatnot. It's just, we live in a sick world today. It's a sick world. But back in the 50s, things was a little more wholesome. And the horrors was all in your mind. It was all the horror they could make you imagine in this movie. So this movie starts off with this idyllic 1950s little nuclear family scene. John Wayne, he play Uncle Ethan. And he coming back, visiting his brother's family, all the little children up like, Uncle Ethan, Uncle Ethan, you back from the war. He is former Confederate soldier, right? But the war been over for three years. He ain't come home. He been out doing all sorts of stuff, running around, rooting and tooting. So he come back, all the little children like, Uncle Ethan, yeah, you're back. And then it's a nice, wholesome family little scene, you know. And then right away, there's an engine attack. The Native American, the Comanche engines, they run off the fellas' cows. So they're all like, all right, we got to go looking for these cows, right? So they go out looking for the cow, and they find all the cows dead. And John Wayne, he all like, he took up the spear. He like, only one tribe used these chair spare. <laughs> That's me doing an impression of John Wayne through my stupid cowboy accent. So John Wayne, he all like, only one tribe uses these here spears, come match, right? And he all like, well, they didn't take these cows just to kill them for no reason because they didn't want the cows. They wanted to lure us out here. Get us away from the women and children. This is a murder raid. So then all the people, they go rushing back, rushing back to the farmhouse to save the people. But then they get back and it's too late. And they, all the women and children, they've been raped and murdered and killed and slaughtered. But you don't actually see none of it, right? You see John Wayne go into the building and look at what happened to him. And then he come out and they're like, what'd you see in there? Let me go. I got to see. And he punches the fella. He's like, you don't want to go in there. You're not going to. Ah, you keep him out of there. Ah. So it's really just John Wayne's horrified reaction to the violence that puts the imagery in your mind of like, oh, my God, those poor children. They all been raped and slaughtered and killed. Right. But then the girls, the young girl. They took the two young girls off. So then John Wayne, that's why the movie called The Searchers, because they searching for the girl, right? So they go out, 
to look for the one and two girls, right? And they, they, at first they find the one girl, but she been raped and killed. And John Wayne, he come back, he got that that thousand yard stare, right? And the dude was all like, oh, I found her, I found a girl. He's like, you didn't find that girl. That's some Comanche wearing her dress. I found her back there. What they did to her. He's like, what did they do? Tell me. He's like, what do you want me to draw you a picture? Don't ever ask me. Yeah, I'm a cowboy. Pew, pew. So John Wayne, he all messed up in the head, right? And it's a racist movie. Now, not the movie not racist, okay? But John Wayne's character, he racist against these no good Comanche. Because good reason, because they killed his whole family, his women and children and everything. But he got a sidekick character in the movie who, see, this is another one of them movies that they'll say, oh, that movie's racist. But I don't think it is racist because they got a character in the movie who's a half Cherokee. And it's not like they don't, you know, they make it pretty clear that you don't see in a lot of these, the way people talk about the Native Americans today, they talk about it like it was just the Native Americans, like a unified people. When they had all these tribes, the Comanche and the Cherokee and whatnot. So there's one fella who half Cherokee or a, a eighth Cherokee or something, and he was adopted by the family. But John Wayne, he all ordinary towards him. He's like, you ain't got no kin, right? So he sort of played trade as the more heroic guy, the, the guy who's part Cherokee and John Wayne is portrayed kind of like a crazy person and uh, like there's scenes where John Wayne there's one part where he all like they find some dead Comanche <laughs> and John Wayne just shoots him pew, pew. and they're like what good did that do and he's like well you guys might believe and you go to heaven or hell when you die but according to that Comanche's belief if he ain't got no eyes he can't get to the spirit world. And then he's got to walk forever between the winds. So John Wayne, he taking people's eyes out after they dead so that they got to walk forever between the winds. That's some pretty horrifying. See, all the horror is in your mind in this movie. This is a horrific movie. John Wayne, he going crazy shooting all the buffalo because they needed a buffalo to eat. But then he's shooting up all the buffalo anyway. And he's like, they're not going to have nothing to eat this winter. Those dang Comanche. John Wayne, he crazy. So, John Wayne's character in the movie is kind of portrayed as like this crazy, hateful fella. But the movie itself kind of portrays, like they show women and children of the Native Americans being slaughtered by the U.S. government and stuff. And so it's kind of, I don't think the movie itself is racist, even though modern standards would say, oh, this movie racist. Because the main villain, too, is the fella called Scar. The chief of the Comanche, his name is Scar, and he's got blue eyes, and he looks like Sean Connery in brown face. He looked like a young Sean Connery, like in the early James Bond days. You paint him brown, put a long hair wig on him, that's what the chief of the Comanche looked like. So he killed the one girl, but then the little girl, the little tiny baby girl, he take her as his wife, right? And... So they're looking for her. They're searching. And this is an epic movie. It takes place. They're searching for her for like five years. So by the time they find the girl, she like all grown up and married to this fella. And she don't even want to go back with them. She's like, these are my people. You got to go. You got to get out of here. Right? So there's a scene earlier too where John Wayne, he, they, they're finding, they, they find the U.S. Army and they had just slaughtered a bunch of Comanche. And... And they're like, you got any white girls here? We're looking for a white girl. And then they show them, yeah, we got a couple. And they look at all these women and they all crazy. They've been abducted and raped and tortured and whatnot for years and living among the Indians. And they're like, <laughs> they're all traumatized. They got the post-traumatic stress. And John Wayne, he looking at them and he's like, they're not white anymore. And just, you know, the, the stuff that was acceptable not that long ago, that today would just, I mean, nobody would even think to put a line like that in a movie today, I don't think. So, you know, recently on the channel, I was reading through 1984 and all these books and whatnot, Brave New World, and there's a lot of talk in those books about the destruction of history and trying to wipe out 
history to bring about the whole new order and everything and you know rage against the machine who controls the past controls the future now testify i'm a dang old rootin tootin cowboy but anyway so you know it's important to look back at the past and see the sort of attitudes that were held but even then this is from the 50s and you can see like his attitude is not really portrayed in a positive light right because you got the hero the more heroic character in the movie who's like this half Cherokee guy and he like he trying to stop John Wayne because John Wayne go off and he gonna get the little girl who was like these are my people now you gotta go he gonna kill her he gonna put a bullet in her brain and John the the Native American half Native American stepbrother of her he all like I gotta stop him he's crazy right so he go off and chase the guy and John Wayne he running her around on a horse he gonna kill the little girl right just a big, I'm spoiling the whole movie here. This is what we do. This this, this is the wicked child, child cowboy thing. So he running her down on the horse. But then at the last moment, he have a change of heart. He pick her up. He like, let's go home. <laughs> so this is a crazy, Rudy Tootie, racist cowboy movie. And and I like it. And I like, <laughs> we're going to have to do more racist movie reviews from back in the day. I want to watch. I want to watch uh, some Abbott and Costello Africa Screams. I bet that's a racist movie. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we're not specifically talking about racist movies right now. We're, right now, we're just talking about dang old Rudy Tootie Cowboy movies until we can get this chair copy of Red Dead Redippy Do given away, which ain't going to happen until we get 500 subscribers. And right now, it ain't looking so good. <laughs> Right now, we just hovering between 168 and 167. We got to get up to subscriber numbers. Otherwise, I'm just going to be talking about these dang old <laughs> rootin' tootin' cowboy movies for the rest of my life, which is a very real possibility. I'm never going to run out of cowboy movies to talk about, okay? I mean, John Wayne alone starred in over 200 movies. I mean, I could spend the next year just talking about nothing but Django movies. There's so many dang old Django movies. So... Help me out here, people. I want to talk about some other movies. I got other videos that I want to make. There's so many videos we're supposed to be making here, and I've been completely sidelined myself with this stupid Red Dead Redippin' Do Cowboy <laughs> Rootin' Tootin' giveaway, and it looks like we're, we're going to be talking about cowboy movies for a long time yet to come. So please, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, because y'all want this Red Dead Redippin' Do Cowboy video game, and I want to give it away and talk about some other movies that are not dang old rootin' tootin' pow, pow, cowboy movies. But we still got a long ways to go. So we're going to be talking about dang old pow, pow, rootin' tootin' cowboy movies for a little while yet. And yeah, so stay tuned. Hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll be back. Come along back now, you hear little doggies? Pow, pow.